What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. We're seeing some disturbing news here that China is secretly sending enough gear to Russia to equip an army. Shipments of military-capable hardware expose a China-sized loophole in Western sanctions. Yeah, take a listen to this. More items made in China are finding their way onto the battlefields in Ukraine despite sanctions imposed by the U.S. and our allies. A new story in Political looks at how these dual-use products, including commercial drones and ceramic for body armor, are ending up in the hands of Russians. The State Department says Secretary of State Antony Blinken raised this issue with China's president during his trip to Beijing in June. On the private sector side, it was an issue where we had also where we also had serious concerns. We had seen companies providing assistance to Russia in the past and had sanctioned those companies, and that we would continue to monitor it closely uh, and and take actions against private Chinese companies when we saw such sanctionable activity. Now, joining us now is David Rank. He spent 27 years as a Foreign Service officer with the State Department and served as the acting ambassador to China before stepping down in June of 2017. Dave, I have to believe that nothing about this uh, surprises you that we're finding uh, different parts on the battlefield uh, from places that they should not be. Well, it depends who you ask, right? I mean, the Chinese uh, people selling them are happy to sell them. Uh, I mean, first of all, China manufactures, they are the world's uh, manufacturer. So uh, it's not a surprise from that perspective that they're showing up there. And look, China just has a very different view of Russia and Ukraine than we do. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of Chinese exporters at the, the private company level will sell whatever they can. And Beijing, the Chinese government, uh, what, what checks Beijing's hand is the reaction the United States or the Europeans might have. And uh, Ambassador Dave, I guess that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you as well, is because I heard one analyst say that it's not even so much about uh, helping Russia so much as sticking it to the U.S. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of love between the Russians and the Chinese. Uh, what they share is a mutual disdain for the United States. And so that's what really brought them together uh, back before the war started. And that's what's keeping them together. Ambassador Dave, uh, when, when you hear about this particular move, though, now with uh, the use of these cluster bombs and things like that, what gives you pause or what concerns do you have? Uh, well, I got lots of concerns. I don't think the cluster bombs are, are Chinese manufactured. My sense is that those are, are Russian. Uh, but generally, I mean, the, the drift of uh, from friction to confrontation to conflict uh, you know, first between uh, Russia and, and Ukraine. But, you know, will it pull the rest of the world in? That, that should be a concern for all of us. And you've heard some political candidates now who are uh, vying for the GOP nomination talk about how they would end the conflict immediately. Having done the work on the ground, how realistic are some of those proposals you're hearing, like saying, hey, we would make sure that Ukraine is not allowed to enter NATO, and we would make sure that uh, Putin immediately disengaged with his talks with China. How strong could the U.S. even be in making those things happen? And does any of that give you uh, reason to feel optimistic or say they really don't understand the work that's necessary on the ground. Uh, sure, you could end the war tomorrow uh, by cutting off the Ukrainians, right? That, that's what's keeping, uh, I mean, really, really uh, brave fighters in the fight is the fact that they have the support of the United States. And if we cut them off, we cut off the democratic government, it could not last very long. The other stuff, uh, taking a tougher line with Russia or China, I, I just don't buy it. Ambassador Dave, how do we continue to uh, have the American public on board with the support that we're giving to Ukraine? It seems as though uh, most recent polling suggests that support may be waning in a small fraction uh, and not a huge drop, but that the numbers seem to be down as far as Americans believing in uh, the continued financial support uh, in the war effort. So I think a big key, and uh, it's not my part of the world, but I think a big key is, and Zelensky understands it, is that they've got to show success on the battlefield, uh, that the the, uh, the counteroffensive that was talked about for months and now, which seems to have begun, I think has to show results. And Americans have to look and say, uh, it, it's worth the investment that we're putting in there. And I think people are understand the sacrifices that Ukrainians are making, uh, that, that uh, you know, I think Americans will, and Europeans and others will want to see 
uh, that it's having an impact uh, on the on the ground. And Ambassador Dave, I've even heard some critics of President Biden say that he has to do a better job of explaining why geopolitics matter on the world stage and our role in making sure uh, that we play a role in the peace process. Former Ambassador Dave, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. <laughs> You know, I just love how, you know, they you talk them you heard them say about China's disdain for the U US and that that might be keeping um you know, Russia and China aligned somewhat. I love how China loves to sell the US millions and millions of products. Um that's okay though. That's okay for China to sell us millions and millions of products. It's just unbelievable, right? So they're, so they're okay with selling us billions and billions of dollars worth of stuff. That's okay. Unbelievable, right? Um, but that yet they have disdain for us. Just, you know, get out of town. It's absolutely just absolutely ridiculous. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But, you know, that kind of stuff just makes me sick. Absolutely just makes me sick. You know, if you got disdain for us now, Imagine if you weren't allowed to sell us anything. Imagine if we stopped buying stuff from you. Imagine the disdain then would you have for us. Maybe then you would actually value us as a trade partner. You know, imagine then you would actually value us. Just saying, just saying. Then let me know your thoughts in the comments. This also comes as China fires their foreign minister. Keen Gang, who has just suddenly gone missing for four weeks. And um, nobody knows where he is. He's just suddenly gone missing. And um, yeah, just kind of one of those things. Hmm. Gee, I wonder where he went. Um, did he say something that China didn't like? And now all of a sudden he's just gone. Yeah, so now um, China has uh, replaced him with the previous foreign minister who was there for decades. And um, everybody's kind of wondering, gee, I wonder what happened to this new foreign minister who was supposed to be this up and coming guy for them. And now all of a sudden just went missing. China didn't say anything where he was for weeks. And now all of a sudden, oh, we think he went ill. We think he went ill. So, yeah. Um, hmm. I wonder what happened. Yeah. Also, uh, in related news, China linked hackers accessed emails of U.S. ambassadors. The hack was part of a targeted intelligence gathering campaign U.S. familiar U.S. officials familiar with the matter said. So you know it's just it's just kind of crazy how uh, Russia and China are just allowed to hack us. Uh, you know, especially China. You know, obviously Russia is not a partner with us at at, at any stage of the game here. But how you know China is allowed to hack us and then also be a trade partner with us on the same, at the same time here. You can see here, China-linked hackers access the email account of the U.S. ambassador to China. So this is a guy that works with China on a daily basis. You know, he's assigned to be the ambassador there. The U.S. ambassador, Nicholas Burns, as part of a recent targeted intelligence gathering campaign, two U.S. officials familiar with the matter confirmed. The hackers also breached the email account of Daniel Crittenbrink, the Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia. The official said Crittenbrink recently traveled to China with Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. The breach, first reported Thursday by the Wall Street Journal, was limited to the diplomat's unclassified email accounts, or so the officials are telling us so this is at least what they're telling us right i don't know how they're saying that the unclassified emails were hacked but not the rest of them secretary of state anthony blinken said the u.s will take appropriate action if deemed necessary with the chinese hacking um 
first of all, I don't know what action they will take. We'll see. But I don't know how appropriate action is not deemed necessary after China hacked their emails. How is there not appropriate action deemed necessary? Um, you could let me know your thoughts here. But this is just at some point, enough is enough, right? How is something not? It's just it's it's un unrelentless, right? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything happening on a daily basis that you need to know about. So if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you don't miss out on anything happening here. Also, thanks for liking and sharing these videos. New videos come out here on our YouTube channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click here to see a new video that North Korea says a nuclear attack will be justified. Or thousands of people are evacuating here from a nuclear reactor potential explosion. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.